Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. Today we're going to continue our video series on carburetor chokes because the weather's getting colder out and some of you guys need to get your vehicles ready. So if you missed the last video, I'll include a link in the description and up top. We set our choke stat lever adjustment and we also set our fast idle speed. So that means in today's video we're going to be moving on to setting our primary and secondary vacuum brakes. This way as the car gets warmed up we can have that nice smooth steady idle that we need. So let's take a look at the carburetor over here on the bench and we'll jump in. Okay so here we have our emissions era carburetor. We have two vacuum brakes. The primary vacuum brake which is located in the front of the carburetor here and the secondary vacuum brake which is located in the rear. The primary vacuum brake is connected directly to vacuum. This should activate uh, maybe about one, one and a half seconds after startup. The secondary vacuum brake is usually attached to some sort of uh, vacuum source, either a thermal vacuum switch or some sort of solenoid activated vacuum switch. This should activate maybe about 30, 35, no more than 40 seconds after, car, after the car starts up. Now what will happen is uh, you've, you've given it a little gas, you've set your choke, you've turned the key, uh, the engine has fired up. As soon as that engine kicks over, it now requires a little more air and a little less fuel than it needed just to get it started and get it going. So as soon as the engine starts generating vacuum, it's going to activate this primary vacuum brake. And as you watch our choke, you can see our choke slightly opens when vacuum is applied to it. So today, first thing we're going to do is we are going to check our primary vacuum brake, make sure it's opening properly, and then we're going to sit, set the proper angle uh, that it needs. Now, if the angle's off, you may get a stumble, you may get a little hesitation, uh, you might be getting too little or too much air in there, that's why you want to check this measurement. Every car has its own specification and you should consult the service manual for your particular vehicle to find out. All right, so the first thing we have to do when we're going to set this is we need to check and see if our vacuum brake has any air bleed holes. GM used several different types of vacuum brakes for a company that liked to number and be very specific with specific parts. They actually did a lousy job with helping uh, us figure out whether we have an air bleed hole or not. They use vacuum brakes from different manufacturers. Some did, some didn't. So inspect your vacuum brake very carefully. You're going to look for a small air bleed hole uh, somewhere in the front here, either in the uh, around where the tube enters the diaphragm area or actually on the tube itself. If you have one of those, you need to take a piece of tape and plug it up before we get started. Uh, this particular carburetor doesn't have any, so that's not something I really need to worry about. Okay, now that we've checked our carburetor for air bleed holes and plugged any up that we have found, we are going to need one of these. This is a carburetor angle gauge. Uh, your carburetor Vacuum brake specifications are given to you by General Motors in angles, 25 degrees, 43 degrees, whatever the case may be. Uh, so you are going to need one of these. Way, way, way back in the day, they used drill bit sizes to help the home mechanic uh, kind of figure out what they needed in regards to uh, opening dimensions. But now with a secondary vacuum brake on these emission errors carburetors, um, the openings are just too great for a drill bit and it's not specific enough. So you are going to need one of these. Uh, they are still available. You can find them on eBay uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks. Now we'll attach our angle gauge to the choke plate itself. You're going to use this flat section right here. Not like that. Not like that. You want to set it right here like this, right in the center. Now you will notice a bubble similar to a level right here. What you want to do now is rotate this dial until you get the bubble centered 
and your angle gauge should be set to zero down here while you're doing this. So now that we have the bubble centered there, just like a level, we're at our base setting for the angle gauge. We're ready to move on to the next step. And now that we've got our angle gauge on there and set to zero, we are going to disconnect the primary vacuum brake and attach our trusty $15 absolutely accurate Harbor Freight vacuum pump. We are now going to apply 15 inches of vacuum. Okay, so now our uh, primary vacuum brake has retracted. If yours isn't, and you want to just push down on it to make sure it is, you need to bend this rod and adjust it here. Um, but ours is fully retracted. And that brings me to another point. Sometimes some of these vacuum brakes have what's called a bucking spring attached. If that were the case, you would have to rock this piece back and forth a little bit to make sure the spring's fully down and then reapply 15 inches of vacuum. Okay, now that we've got our vacuum brake fully retracted, we are gonna go ahead and take a look at our angle gauge. Now, our car calls for 25 degrees of angle. The primary vacuum brake is activated. Hey, if you could see from the bubble here, um, and I will show you zoom into this, we are not at 50, uh, 25 degrees, our bubble is off. So we're gonna have to make an adjustment, and that's very straightforward. I'll show you how to do that now. Now, in order to get our choke plate to the right angle, we're gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver and turn this screw out until we can get that bubble centered and there we go we have our bubble centered right at the 25 degree mark where we want it so now we know that our primary vacuum brake is set right where it needs to be once you've got your bubble centered you're done see it wasn't that bad setting that primary vacuum brake now that'll make sure we have a nice smooth idle for the first 30 or 40 seconds after startup the motor will get the proper mixture of air and fuel that it needs. So next, we'll move on and set our secondary vacuum brake. So we get the next minute or two of uh, running time, nice and smooth. The engine getting the proper air fuel mixture it needs until the engine warms up and the choke kicks off. Uh, before we do that, though, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you found it helpful. All right, let's go back to the bench and check things out. All right, so first things first, we are going to reset our angle gauge back to zero and get our bubble back into the center. Next, we are going to wrap a rubber band around our intermediate choke shaft here you can see I've worked it around this piece here and place it over the back of our carburetor here to keep constant upward full pressure on the mechanism inside. Next, we'll attach our vacuum pump to the secondary vacuum brake and apply 15 inches of vacuum to it. Once we've got 15 inches of vacuum, our car calls for a 43 degree secondary vacuum brake angle. So we are gonna go ahead and set our gauge to 43 degrees, 41, 42, 43. There we go. I know it's difficult to see, but our air bubble is way off. So this is also going to require some adjustment. We are going to adjust our angle by bending this rod here 
either in or out depending on where we need it to be. Oh, well, before I forget, some of you guys will not have to bend this rod. Some of the secondary or rear vacuum brakes have an adjusting screw similar to the front. It's usually an Allen wrench in the back where you can adjust your, uh, your vacuum brake in and out to get the reading correct. So you don't have to deal with that. All right, so that's it guys. The two adjustments to the two vacuum brakes on your electronic quadrajet or dual jet carburetor. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that your car will be able to start this winter if you need it to. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.